to cut the long story short, our ball A has an initial velocity of 2 meters per second downwards. And our ball B has an unknown initial velocity. So ball A and B, they strike the ground at the same time. Even though ball B is projected one second later. That is the scenario we have. And 3.1 is just the definition. What is meant by a projectile? An object which has been given an initial velocity and then moves under the influence of gravitational force only. That is what we call a projectile. Let's look at 3.2 and 3.2.1. Calculate by using the equations of motion the time taken by stone A to heat the water. So let's go ahead and look at the information we have. The information we have is what's going to guide us to the formula that we need to use. So I know that VI, I always take up as positive, by the way, unless stated otherwise by the equation. So VI is 2 meters per second. If I'm taking up as positive, this will be downwards, and I'm going to substitute it with a negative sign. And the acceleration is negative minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Delta Y is negative. I have minus 50. What am I looking for? I'm looking for delta T. When I have these variables, I can use delta Y is equals to VI delta T plus a half A delta T squared. But I don't want to use that formula because my initial velocity is not zero. I'm going to have to solve a quadratic equation. And that is the last thing I want to do. So instead, I'm going to say that VF squared is equals to VI squared plus 2A delta Y. If I find VF, I'm going to be able to use VF is equals to VI plus A delta T and find the time. So VF squared is equals to VI squared minus 2 squared plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration minus 9.8 multiplied by delta Y minus 50. Now I just need to take square root on both sides. I'm going to get VF being equals to 31.3688 meters per second. But I know that it is downwards because the ball is striking the ground while it is going downwards. When I use it next, I'm going to put a negative sign. You need to be aware of that. Right. So now that I have VF, I'm going to say that VF is equals to VI plus A delta T. So delta T is equals to VF minus VI divided by the acceleration. VF is minus 31.3688 minus VI. VI is minus 2 meters per second, right? And then we divide it by the acceleration, which is minus 9.8. And then our delta T is 2.99. Well, it is just 3 seconds because we're supposed to round it off to 2 decimal places if it is our final answer. So we have 3 seconds. That is uh, delta T. Uh, the question that follows, 3.2.2, we're supposed to calculate the time T again by stone B to heat the water. This is for one mark. So just to remind you, stone A and stone B strikes the ground at the same time, but stone B is projected one second later. So the time for stone B it's equals to the time for stone A minus 1. So this is just 3 minus 1, which is 2 seconds. And just like that, we have the time for stone B. 3.2.3, the initial velocity of stone B. So let's look at the information that we have with regards to stone B. And then an approach is going to present itself. That's how it works. So we have delta T, which is equals to 2 seconds. We have VI, which is what you're interested in. We have delta Y, which is minus 50, because up is always positive, common sense. And then our acceleration is minus 9.8. Uh, what else am I missing? I have delta T, I have VI, I have delta Y, I have the acceleration. What am I looking for? I'm looking for VI. 
right i can use delta y is equals to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared i'm looking for vi so i'm not going to have to solve a quadratic equation yeah i always run away from solving a quadratic equation i don't like complicating my life unnecessarily so so delta y that is minus 50 and vi it's what i'm interested in delta t is 2 plus a half acceleration minus 9.8 delta t t squared so how do i set up my equations now vi multiplied by 2 will be equals to minus 50 minus a half minus 9.8 the time is 2 squared if I divide both sides by 2, I'm getting VI being equals to 15.2 meters per second down once. Uh, the equation says uh, the velocity, so we're supposed to include the direction, just like I did there. Let's carry on. The last question, 3.3, .3, sketch on the same set of axes, position versus time graphs for the motions of the two stones from the instance that they are thrown until they hit the water in the pool use the water surface as the zero reference clearly show the values on the following of the following on the graphs time at which the stones hit the water time at which stone b is thrown initial height of the stones above the water surface right let's go ahead and see how that is gonna look like we have our y-axis and we have our x-axis. In our x-axis, we have the time in seconds. So let's just go ahead and put that there. And in our y-axis, we have the change in y in meters. We're starting at 50 meters and we're going down to 0 meters. What is our time? Uh, they strike the ground at 3 seconds, right? Uh, but stone B is projected one second after stone A was projected. So the position time graph for stone A would look something like this. This is stone A. And then on the other hand, stone B, stone B will look something like this. There we go. So this is stone A and this is stone B.